ensure that it's the creditors that benefit from all of these assets um, rather than um, someone else benefiting from it. Now, the process will be happening side by side. You'll have the auction was announced and the process in order to make that happen um, can be happen. Um, and uh, there's ways of engaging in both sides uh, of the process. But um, what I think we really need to focus on um, is working with um, the UCC and ensuring that we're engaging in the process in the correct way um, in order to really see if we can put together the best reorganization possible. Um, and that involves a cooperation between the community, um, Celsius, the company, um, and the different parts that we've been putting together so that we've got securities compliance at Bank to the Future and the lending compliance at SALT is um, the proposal uh, that we uh, hopefully are starting to converge with. So it's not a formal provo proposal. It's ideas we're chucking around right now. Um, and uh, we've got to make sure that we're following um, the correct process with that. Um, so with that in mind, I'm going to let a few people in. I'm just going to do it in order of people coming up. So it takes a few seconds. I've led up about uh, four people and one of you will probably be able to speak. Um, and uh, yeah, who'd like to go? Oh, let's see if I, I've got to make a Zard's co-host as well so I can figure that part out. Um, yes, uh, good uh, evening. Thank you very much. Uh, I you said that the filling for the auction is done, but it is not 100% sure that there will be no Celsius plan filled to the UCC because in the big news this week, it was the resignment of uh, Alex Mashinsky. And uh, in the, the street of filling, it is mentioned that uh, at the end of the week, the debtor should file his plan, which we have been waiting for months. So we do we have a news regarding this debtor Celsius plan filling to the UCC. Do you take this new street of filling today for the auction as a 100% occurrence, or we will still get a, a plan, a recovery plan? Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, great question. So um, it was really great. If you haven't caught up on the town hall by the UCC, it's really worth investing the two hours to listen to that because they really laid out the process. Um, if we, if you could mute yourself, sorry, because I think we've got a lot of um, funny noise. Um, oh, Azad, I'm just going to make you co-host. Um, if you could all mute yourself, I'm just going to... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to mute myself. Thank you. Um, sorry, very few of you make, there's some really bad noises. Okay, great. <clears throat> yeah. Um, if you didn't get a chance to watch the UCC's um, town hall, they really laid out the process. Um, it was really, you know, really the moment that I think the community was looking for in terms of clarifying um, of next steps. Um, and so the other event that we were looking for is really uh, some of the friction. So, um, you know, Alex um, stepping down, which we covered last week, um, I think was the key catalyst for us to be able to um, speak um, and, uh, you know, that, that will go through its process, but we can stop focusing on Alex and start focusing on the reorg. Um, and a reorg, uh, the data does have the exclusivity, um, but now we've got a change in the board. Um, we're hoping that there's a way more collaborative process um, with the board members that are probably more likely to be focusing on um, the, the reorg without some of the other legacy issues that might get in the way. Um, and so energetically, it was a really big shift. Um, there's still things to look out for, um, you know, and the commitment that I made is to only um, talk about Alex in relation to if it affects any type of reorg or recovery plan or creditors. Other than that, we're just not, um, or I'm not gonna talk about it in, in any other way, shape or form. So. The only thing that is left um, is that board position um, on the holding company. And the UCC have reassured us um, that uh, the decision making process is over to a committee and the committee are focused on collaborating uh, with the Celsius UCC um, in order to get um, the most effective um, reorganization that comes from uh, the data. Um, and so 
we got to make sure that um, they, they do have exclusivity. And then the UCC made a commitment um, that uh, if that isn't happening, then they have the authority to move over to a UCC reorg plan. Um, and so whether it comes from the data or whether it comes from the UCC, um, I think it's all about uh, the first main scale community effort of over uh, 300,000 creditors and our uh, subsection of the community that's really engaging in this process through Twitter spaces um, to ensure uh, that all of the pieces are put in place and there's two different processes to work um, and we need to work both of those processes but the data still has exclusivity um, on those plans um, and so uh, that, that's the, the next step of the process. Thank you. Next uh, speaker is Taylor. Hey, yeah, uh, thanks for having me up. Can I ask a question about um, preference claims for insiders? Simon, is that cool? Uh, yeah, may not be. I'll give you my opinion, but may not be um, the, the legal opinion you need. Okay, yeah, that's cool. It's just a kind of a twist. So I just read that that like one of the state regulators, I think Vermont said that Celsius might have been insolvent technically in like 2019. And due to like the bending of the truth, I think we've seen just based on like screenshots and stuff from um, some of the, you know, pe people at, that work at Celsius, like, is it possible they knew the, the laws and they knew like, I, you know, we can only go back a year or something so we better start like withdrawing funds if we're insiders like before that time. Yeah, what I don't want to do is um, really speculate on the things of how it happened, why it happened. Let's lose that. We've got an examiner right now and the examiner is going to do what they need to do. Um, the most important thing that I think we should all be focusing on is um, how to reorganize the assets so that creditors get the benefit of them. Um, and avoid being in a scenario where um, there's uh, preferences and clawbacks or anything that ruins the brand, the future brand value of the reorganized company. Um, and so if we're all on, uh, you know, the same team along the lines of, you know, there's only two few ways of doing this. You've got your making the assets into some kind of IOU structure, um, making sure that um, there's valuable equity. And part of having valuable equity would be um, not, uh, you know, hundreds of thousands of customers that, that think that this ruined their life um, because of the, the dollarization, the crash and clawbacks and all that type of stuff. Um, and a regulatory structure whereby dealing with bankruptcies is clear into the future, which is why, you know, regulated brokers and various other um, financial institutions um, exist because there's, there's more clear processes and they've dealt with it in the legacy system. Um, so I think... Here's my honest opinion, um, not legal advice, not tax advice, not financial advice. Um, if we end up in Chapter 7, then I believe that um, clawbacks are, are, are something that's highly likely. Um, if the community is involved in um, a reorg, whether it comes from the data, um, you know, representing the community and taking all the, everything for the benefit of creditors, or the UCC um, putting together a reorg for the benefit of creditors, um, then I think none of us want to have any part of um, those preferences. Um, and so I think that's the optimum strategy here um, in, in order to uh, make sure that, you know, we've got something where we're all trying to focus on future equity value um, as a result. Okay, cool. Yeah, I should have worded it probably a little bit differently and just thought like, was that maybe a possibility that any of that happened? But yeah, I only currently, have... currently it is a possibility. So, um, you know, they are holding back some of the custody money for preferences in order to figure out how they're going to deal with that one. The preference and the custody issue um, are being, you know, my guess is if I'm guessing where it goes with the custody issue, um, it's that they're waiting for the examiner report because in the UCC call, they talked about the substance of proving ownership. And one of them is terms and conditions, but there's other things. And so I think it's going to go into a discovery mode to figure out whether custody um, in, you know, substance actually in those assets rather than whether it was just in terms and conditions. Um, and that hopefully leads into um, the preference issue uh, being resolved. But I think um, if we, you know, being held back, but I think if we end up in chapter seven, then this preference thing is definitely going to become a thing. 
Um, there's also obviously insiders and, and some of the more um, larger um, tether loans and various other things that uh, people are looking into. That's mainly what I was asking about, Simon. Um, but yeah, thanks. Thanks for helping. I just, uh, I just, I didn't hear anyone ask that. And I think if they were insolvent before and just do like, I know there are people that like Alex and stuff on this call and I'm not going to like trash on them, but just due to the sketchy, I mean, there, there are screenshots, there are AMAs, there are all sorts of like evidence of them bending the truth. Like there's, you can't deny it at this point. And I just think like if they withdrew funds earlier, knowing they were insolvent, like that needs to come out. That's not fair to every, like all the creditors, you know what I mean? Yeah, so here's, I think, um, if I'm trying to read between the line, the, the, the service that the UCC that we're paying for is doing for us. Um, they managed to get the change in board, which was a really, really big milestone from my perspective, because I don't think that the company should suffer as a result of decisions um, from you know, certain executives that were made. Once you separate those things, I'm hoping that that energetically allows us to um, see things slightly differently. Um, then you need to really focus on the regulatory side. Um, now, what I think that the UCC has been doing is that they, they were busy at work finding the information that they needed in order to get that change in the board. Um, once, uh, once that came along, um, they wanted to lower the scope of the examiner um, and the examiner, if they come in and just spend all of our money in finding all sorts of things that um, proves that this is just, you know, something that regulators want to shut down straight away, move into chapter seven, go to clawbacks, crash the industry and just create the worst case scenario, in my opinion, for all creditors. Um, then I think they lowered the scope of the examiner. So it was just focused on the things that are needed. Um, and then hopefully we get through a reorg. They've pushed forward the auction process so that we can have an understanding of the value of the assets, a lot of the due diligence that needs to come out um, in these assets. Um, and I'm hoping that uh, we as a community can put together a reorg with either the UCC or the data that kicks the shit out of any of those offers. Um, and then we just leave the, the, the law enforcement and the examinations and everything to do their process afterwards um, which we don't need to worry about because, um, you know, we've uh, got out of chapter 11. Now, all of that is an incredibly challenging mission. Um, but I think that if we if we just uh, continue on the process we're going for, we've got half a shot at getting there. Um, and uh, and that's what I think the UCC has been working on. And so far, I think that they've been doing a pretty damn good job at executing that. But we really needed the communication which started this week um, and understand that sometimes it ruins the strategy just communicating what you're doing so and um, being aware of some of those things we've already seen that with my interactions um in the past where i can't say certain things um, and that leads to conspiracy theories about certain things um, but i'm hoping that we're, we're we're moving towards um you know more alignment because less of the games being played okay thank let's you. bring on chronos yes thank you very much Simon, is it okay to address some concerns that I have about Voyager at this time? Go for it, yeah. Thank you. All right, so I have a couple of concerns because the judge that is presiding before this case, uh, from what I understand, he doesn't know anything about cryptocurrency, number one. The industry is not regulated. Uh, Voyager, like Celsius, was able to hire very, very good lawyers, and I question sometimes the advisors. So the question that I have is, as I understand this, the current FTX offer appears to completely wreck the token holders of the VGX token and the stockholders. So is that a true statement, number one? Number two, is there is there a better hope, if you will, for the creditors? Because the, the token holders, for instance, is over 300,000 people, and that's significant numbers. So what are your thoughts behind that? Thank you. Um, I'm going to have to, so much happened on the Celsius. So um, I was quite on top of the Voyager stuff and I was putting forward some forecasts about what I thought was the things to um, be wary of. Um, I'm going to have to catch up on what the, I haven't actually read the papers yet, unfortunately, to know everything, to be able to comment on a really good way. What I do promise is I will do a space next week um, once I've deconstructed that. Um, I did try to catch up with the uh, Voyager UCC unsuccessfully. 
um, and I tried to um, pull um, some contacts there, but um, unfortunately, um, I was just really, it was such a big week, both in the global macroeconomics and the Celsius side that um, I haven't been able to keep up, unfortunately. So um, my guess is from what you're saying is tokens are going to be a very contentious issue. Um, and so they, I'm not sure what's happened with the token. Maybe you can inform me what, what's going on with the token. Yeah, from what I understand, uh, FTX has essentially purchased all the assets and there is plans of migrating the assets onto FTX US, number one. Number yeah, two, so let, me, let me comment on that. So the difference with Voyager is that um, they are mainly an exchange. Um, now, they did have this lending business that caused the blow up of the exchange um, and, uh, you know, um, over lending um, using the collateral. Um, but um, my, my, my opinion is that, um, you know, they, they're not looking to reorg and reopen that um, earned security and various other things. Um, so the FTX, um, I haven't studied their, um, their regulations, but they are a, a regulated exchange from what I can tell, both in the US and non-US. So and that allows them to be able to operate um, in those sides because it's a different type of business. Um, so that's, the, that's the, the first part of it. So they migrate everyone over. So it's a user acquisition. And um, the price that they paid, you can't, you know, it's cash is cash at the bottom of the market. Um, and so what else? No, I'm from what I understand is that there is plans to essentially wind down the app. And there seems to be a dissemination, if you will, or killing off the actual token, which is a significant concern for many, many people. So what a lot of people are wondering right now, is there is there hope for, for this to become a better situation? Because there seems to be an ample ability for creative solutions out there that would not necessarily kill the token, continue to give it utility, because a lot of people have invested a lot in well, there is a whole saga of stories behind it, but that's yeah. I just leave it as that. So let me let me try and interpret that into something, um, and I'll do a bit more research. But um, it all depends on whether the initial reorg plan was just a strategy to try and get much higher bids so that they could compete with the reorg, knowing that they never had any intention to do a reorg in the first place or whether the board actually really were pushing for a reorg and whether the UCC was committed to a reorg. If the UCC were looking for the easy solution, which it looked like it was, let's get this through an auction process, then there may have been um, the board that were not, you know, they were indicating that they're going to use token debt and equity, um, which is the way to get the right result um, if you have an intention and desire to reorg and get a more speculative but better result for creditors um, versus is the hole small enough for someone to come along and fill a chunk of it and go for the easier, safer solution. Um, and so I don't know whether the reorg in, uh, was originally um, a strategy to try and get more bidders in or whether they genuinely wanted to do it. And that's really, I think, the, the next process is, is the UCC... Um, willing to do the harder work of doing a higher risk, higher return strategy um, of pushing forward a reorg, um, or are they just looking for the lower risk, easier option of what they got on the table? That's the question to get answered. Yeah, the UCC in this case appears to be completely different from um, Celsius's UCC. The Voyager UCC has been very, very, very silent for the most part. And a lot of times they cite NDA this, NDA that, but the, the level of communications from the Celsius UCC has been far greater. So I do have the but concern it, it, that- it just, it just got greater. It got greater this week. It was nothing before. Um, okay. So no, I was about to say. Okay, no, thank you very much. I mean, I think- uh, Yeah. I think you'll do more work and I look forward to listening to you again on the topic. Thank okay, you. yeah. But the token side is, is, is a challenge, um, it certainly is. Um, because if it was a utility token connected to the original app and the app is no longer needed, um, then what does it do and, and what is it for? Um, and then how do you get that signed off by regulators? Uh, that, and then remember, you still got the vote process. So whatever the final steps of um, getting this uh, through the vote process um, is as well. 
but yeah, it seems like there's a, a much less competitive market um, and that it's going for the lower risk, um, lower return option. Okay, let's bring on the next speaker, Jason. Hey guys, good afternoon, good morning, good evening to everybody. Um, Simon. Okay, hey, Jason. Jason. How are you doing today? Yeah, are you a penguin now? No, that's my puppy. Oh, sorry. It looked like a penguin on my phone. Oh, uh, this is my kid's nightlight. This is what I first started with. And that's nice. how I got the purple puppy out of it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, uh, good to hear from you, Jason. How you doing? I'm good. Um, so, all right, first, Simon, do you think the hurricane down in Florida will have an impact on BTC? Since there's a good portion of crypto uh, investors that live in Florida. On the macro side, like, do you see that being a an issue with BTC? And then, yeah, I don't. I, I had don't a second question focus on the short term stuff, but yeah, I don't see okay. a long term impact. Okay, and um, okay, now if salt, if you when you acquire salt and say we do get a merger idea out of this, a plan that salt comes in and has the licenses, merges with Celsius loans, and all that stuff. What is the plan with salt token and sell token? Would you destroy both and just start a whole new one where we can just, from what's in app, redeem for a new token, a, a straight up utility token or something along those lines? Your ideas, speculation, yeah, so, whatever you want to do. Um, to help everyone understand what we're talking about, um, the Bank to the Future token um, was something we launched to support our investors under a utility model in building their portfolio. Um, as the regulatory environment became uh, more aggressive, more clear, uh, we decided to leave it be. Um, and in the future, once the security token market is a bit more understood um, and has progressed a bit more, um, look to do some kind of uh, restructure with that. Um, Salters can't talk about it, um, but I believe they're in a similar situation um, because of uh, that token. Um, and so, you know, all I think we can confirm at this stage is that we would look to do not within this process because I think we've got a massive, massive battle ahead of ourselves, um, just getting a compliant model that um, regulators might sign off on. Uh, moving forward that combines lending securities and some of the key assets. Um, I think the, the token battle has to be fought another day. Um, and I think that there's many ways of, you know, uh, of figuring those out later. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to pass that conversation for later. I got you. That's all good. Uh, one last thing. What do you think of uh, XR or Ripple's, summary judgment argument on the blue sky rule. I, I thought it was a great uh, a great argument on going back to the uh, SEC on how they actually came up with that one prong to uh, specifying it's a contract. Yeah, I think XRP is slightly different in the, the issue. It, well, it's its own blockchain and it's got its own ecosystem. So that tends to be treated slightly differently to a token built on top of someone else's blockchain. Um, so there's that. But then it's the fact that they've got this large treasury. Um, and I haven't actually looked at those specific ones. So I don't want to talk about it because I haven't um, actually oh, been Simon following read that it. specific I, I, I think it's a great read. Yeah, I'll definitely the, check it out. The argument, yeah. It. yeah. It, 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 it's a good way to turn their stance on the Howey test against their perception of it or how they how they came up with it is what they're going after saying that a contract is a contract where you need an actual contract i see but i i, I it's a definitely good read but thank you for your time simon thank you jason okay let's bring up uh, plan c Yeah, hey guys, thanks again for hosting these calls. It's it's always great and a lot of good information here um, and community engagement. Uh, I watched a video uh, this morning that Aaron put out. Aaron's been putting out a lot of these really good summary videos and, and looking at the um, the motions being put forward in the courts. 
And he, the one that he covered today, you know, there was a lot of discussions about motions being put forward by like Vermont, Texas, you know, to do with uh, uh, objecting uh, to the sale of, of stable coins. Um, so I thought that was interesting. And then also uh, he mentioned uh, from reading from the motion that it said that 40 different states were, are currently looking into the pre-petition investment activities of the of the current debtor and and like on the call we had with the the ucc town hall the other day the ucc's lawyer mentioned you know the importance of of regulatory compliance <clears throat> moving forward you know with, with these reorgs so i'm just confused at and then kind of i guess my question is to you simon as well as the ucc like like realistically what is the actual likelihood of the current debtor getting a compliant reorg uh, without somebody else's assistance, licenses, or someone else completely like yourself or another party. Because to me, to, to have this, to extend the exclusivity at this point, unless there's like stuff I'm just completely unaware of, I mean, there's so much regulatory hurdles and so much regulatory baggage of, with the current debtor. Like, it, it's just, watch Aaron's video. I mean, see all the motions coming forward. Like, all the states are are just, there's so many, there's so many issues. So, so my th my question to you, Simon, is your thoughts on that? And then I guess if UCC listens to this, it's like we need to just stop this ex exclusivity stuff and and bring in some people that can actually get this done from a regulatory standpoint because it's pretty clear at this point. If you guys watch the video with Aaron, but anyways, I don't know what your thoughts are on that. Yeah. So um, here's what we know: um, the world. Every, you know, regulators all around the world are watching this case. Um, regulators at this stage have an indication of what they want this market to look like in the future. And most of them um, look to the leadership of the current empire, which is the US. Um, now, they put together their own regulations and everyone, everything does something, you know, slightly differently. Um, but the current empire is the one that tends to invest the most in enforcement um, and then many other regulators follow. So the U.S. Um, is, you know, this is one of the most important things that they could be doing right now, because how this case ends up um, could be is it's you either do this in two ways, right? You either go aggressive, shut all this down um, and uh, just just get rid of the whole thing, put it in chapter seven, and we all get screwed as creditors. Or you take the the what I would consider the high road, um, which is is there a reorganization where creditors could be made whole, and at the same time, we um, send a signal to the market of how uh, what registrations and licenses you need in order to operate these businesses in the future. And my hope and focus is on the second. Um, and so the, the, the reason that I focused so much energy and time into that um, was trying to understand what I think the model looks like in a, in a regulatory perspective, both on the lending side and the earn side, the custody side um, and the trading side, um, and making sure that um, there is a model where all the pieces are available to move all of those assets to the benefit of creditors. And what we needed in order to get to the progress to the next stage is a board that was genuinely focused on a compliant reorganization without any legacy issues of trying to do it in a way that regulators don't want you to do it and saying, well, if I can't be regulated, then I'll figure out how to do it with DeFi. Um, and my my complaint was that if you go down that route, um, the regulators do not want, you know, an example of how to circumvent regulations in this case. Um, so my hope, deluded or not, is that now we have the setup and all the pieces um, to redirect the Celsius assets um, with a board that are folk genuinely focused on reorganization to make creditors whole without any legacy issues um, into a new code. And um, we've got the securities pieces, 
and so has the lending pieces. And with the, the, the help of the UCC um, and a board focused on reorg, uh, we could plug that all together to create a, a story that makes creditors whole and gives the regulators the opportunity to say, here's how we want this market to operate in the future. Um, so everyone watch this and this is what we want you to do. And so, the, you know, th those are what, what we need to focus on. And so these motions are just indications saying, yeah, Celsius is not going to get sign off from regulators um, unless you guys, the UCC, um, can figure out another way of doing it. Um, and that's what that's what I'm hope we can all focus on. Thanks for answering that. Thanks, Simon. Okay, let's bring on Gemfi. Gemfi, are you there? Hey, yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, guys. Hi, Simon. How are you doing? Man, you're full well, of energy today, huh? How many coffees did you have? I haven't had a coffee yet. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm high on the community's energy to <laughs> try and um, unify and, and come around and, and do the impossible. Well, it's working out well. You have a lot of people listening to you, also from the cell community. So more power to you, Simon. I'm glad. Um, Simon, in regards to uh, Invest Voyager, so, you know, they're transferring. They bought them up. Uh, FTX bought them up. They're probably transferring all the assets, I don't know, with haircut, whole as cryptocurrency, cash, whatever they're doing. But um, you talked about that the VGX token might be a contingency, so they might replace that with FTX token. And, and um, my question was, could it be that the whole or let's say the haircut could be replaced by FTX tokens to the users? Because my concern is uh, they can print uh, FTX token, right? And maybe hand them over to replace the haircut of these acquired new users. Is that a possibility? Let, yeah, let me answer that in what I say the honest, the honest truth is, but I don't think you're going to like the answer. Um, the less we talk about tokens in getting out of Chapter 11, um, the more likely we are to get out of Chapter 11. The more we talk about tokens and, and structures, um, the more likely we are to um, end uh, to sell this to FTX. That's what I would say. So we we got to focus on the bits that get us out of um, Chapter 11. And um, the, we've got a model right now. And the model is, um, you know, FTX said we just buy the assets and um, I don't know if they specifically said, let me read it, um, but I don't know if they specifically said that what they're going to do with VGX, but it looks like, and I'm sorry if you don't like this answer, that they might be just eliminating it. Um, that might be a model of what is required in order to get out of Chapter 11. Um, and, and that's not a political answer. That's not me trying to say anything. It's just we've we got to go for what's the highest probability of getting out of Chapter 11 and... Uh, it may involve, like, not, not, you know, don't get that confused. Um, everyone that has sell token on the app is should be treated fairly, like everyone else, um, and uh, most of those are on there. Um, so those are creditors. Um, but I don't think the way out of Chapter 11 is is figure out some structure that no one understands around what to do with this token and set a precedent that the regulators are fighting against and would choose Chapter 7. Uh, thank you, Simon. And my second question would go on Plan C. I mean, this is a small favor. I don't know if he's still here or not. Um, we had a couple of conversations through DMs, and I think he asked me a question, and I haven't responded for three days, so he blocked me. I don't know why. There shouldn't be any scrutiny between us. Um, I like, look, Plan C, I like looking at your charts. Can you please unblock me again? That would be super nice. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Simon. Okay, just a quick reminder, we're going to be doing a hard stop at 7.30. Is that correct, Simon? Uh, yeah, I'm done at 7.30. Well, All that's right. UK time, so I'm in Isle of Man. And... Yep. Okay, let's bring on hours. the next speaker, Alan. Hey, uh, thank you for taking my question. Um, a new document just came out about the mining facility, and I was hoping that maybe 
Uh, I know Simon, you tweeted that you're going to have your team look over it. I wanted to know if you if you did that yet, and um, if you could just give us an update. Yeah. Um, so the you know the the documentation around further information is just gradually um, seeping out now, and as we move into an auction process, the you know the 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 data should get better and better and better from here. Um, I've I've sent the document over to people that know what they're talking about. Um, um, you know, if you look back at Bank to the Future, I'm a shareholder in um, with Peter Thiel in uh, one of the first companies that invested in mining in Texas, um, and uh, we created the Bitcoin Bond with somebody that now mines 20% of the network and is acquiring many of the um, the uh, the mining uh, distressed mining companies at the moment as well. Um, and so I'll be putting, you know, that over for uh, them to give me feedback um, on that. But yeah, it's um, it, it, it's looking like a shit show, hopefully something that really is a valuable asset. A lot of money has been spent on it. Um, if that turns out to not be something that we can um, reorg into a valuable asset, then I think we're in a lot of trouble. Um, so I think we've got every incentive right now to figure out uh, how that Bitcoin mining facility can be turned into something that could benefit creditors. Um, and uh, we just didn't have the information. And so now we do. Uh, but no, I haven't gone yet. I haven't. It was a long dock. It was pretty hard to get through. Yeah. And um, on that note, uh, the Mashinsky Declaration seemed to indicate that, and I, I know that you said you didn't want to go into how we got here, you, you kind of just want to look forward, but uh, the Mashinsky Declaration did indicate that they used our funds to uh, purchase the mining, but then the equity holders are now claiming that their funds were used. Uh, those two explanations seem mutually exclusive. So um, uh, just throwing that out there, but I appreciate you guys taking my questions. Yeah, not necessarily mutually exclusive. You, you could have had an initial investment um, they funded an acquisition and then they um, had in those documents, they were talking about lots of agreement they signed. So there was um, lots of further investment and um, a allegedly a bunch of equipment that's uh, not being deployed right now. And then, um, you know, the, the key to mining is getting that equipment moving and working as fast as possible because it's damn expensive when it's not working. Um, I gave an example this morning um, when uh, we, we, it was at one stage, um, we couldn't figure out a way of getting um, mining equipment where it needed to be in Iceland fast enough. Um, and it was going to take too long. And we did the cost benefit analysis of the amount we would have made we made if we just put it to work um, versus the length of time it would take. And we ended up buying um, a jet just to put all the mining equipment in. And it was cheaper um, than how much it was going to cost us not having those uh, miners deployed. Uh, is a funny story. Okay, next speaker is Norman. Norman, can you hear us? Hi, yes, I can. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay, great. Thanks. Thanks for having this, Simon. And I'm glad to see the group of people, well, rather than using the word community, uh, uniting here. Um, not just with you, but I mean, with uh, the fact that we're moving forward now. Um, I wanted to ask you uh, what you thought the percent was, let's say, if you consider the Voyager bankruptcy and you consider the Celsius bankruptcy, what percent would you say we're through this through the system? Like, would you say we're like 40% through the Voyager and 25% through the Celsius uh, bankruptcies. What, what's your percentage guess there? Oh, that's a great question, Norman. Um, and firstly, I want to echo the sentiment um, that it, it's great to be more unified. I think we've all been on this crazy journey. And I also want to echo the sentiment that while I'm hosting this space um, and answering questions, this really isn't about, you know, Simon putting together a plan this is um, a community reorg um, we've got a lot of assets that we want to bring to the table uh, but it does require a collaboration between you know celsius the ucc um, the community um, and many of the assets that we want to offer up in order to get to a reorg that can get to chapter 11 so you know it's not my plan um, it's it's our plan uh, and we need to come to that together 
Um, so that's the, the first thing. Um, in terms of what percentage are we there? Uh, Voyager feels like it feels like a done deal to me. I've got to be honest. Um, it feels like um, that's approximately, I'd say, 70, 80 percent through the process. Um, my hope was that the board wanted to do a contention to the auction and put and propose their own um, recovery plan. My fear is that they actually just um, want to take the easy option and walk away right now. Uh, that's my that's my fear. Um, but at the same time, it's not a great it's not a great outcome. I know it, um, but. The haircut's not catastrophic, and I hope people can can move on from here. But I'll I'll defer to the details. Celsius, I, I really feel like we're I think twenty percent was a good number that you used. Um, I I believe that this week, hearing from the UCC to publicly commit to town halls so that we can just dispel some of the misinformation, um, which energetically just took away so much of our infighting and arguments. Um, and then having, you know, the, the 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 shifts in leadership, knowing that that that's out of the way, um, and a clear outline that we've got this auction process and we've got this um, process for how um, the debtor puts together their um, reorg and uh, the UCC's desire to um, do their own reorg if we need it um, as a community. Um, I'm really excited about either, either seeing a collaboration between all of us and Celsius um, or the UCC saying, right, let's do a community reorg. Um, we got we got all the parts. Let's put it all together. Uh, and just, yeah, so I think we're 20% there. I think we've got a long journey together. Um, but I, I'm hoping that it can be a more, more exciting journey. Um, I know it's still stressful. I know people still need their money. Um, but I'm hoping if we can get through this reorg process um, at some point early next year, people are going to be able to get some of their money um, and uh, we've got an exciting future to work towards. Thank you for that. Um, I have another question. Oh, well, first um, of all, I want to say. So, sorry, Norman. Uh, um, we, I'm, I am getting quite a few just DMs. Just one question. Um, all right, let yeah, me I'm just say thank you, Simon, for having educated me a lot in this money thing. The first part of this thing, I didn't understand a darn thing you said about all that stuff. A lot had to do with war, but I would, and cotton, but I would probably want to buy your book. I hope we can get some uh, autographed copies someday to maybe I'll catch up and learn. And I want to say that uh, one of the things that you've been harping on that I sort of thought you were over harping on, that woman at the UCC meeting talking about licenses needed and Celsius didn't have them and so forth. You were right on the money and I uh, sort of uh, apologized to myself for thinking that was overdone. Yeah, no worries. Um, you know, uh, I don't enjoy being right about some of these things. I'd much rather have been wrong and I have been wrong about some things. So um, when I'm wrong, I'm, I'll say it. But uh, the, the regulations is certainly the, the issue. Okay, um, before I bring, bring on the speakers, we, we do have quite a few requests. Um, so if I could kindly ask one question um, each. Uh, let's bring on Celsius Loan. Hey, thanks, Azad. Thanks, Simon. Uh, I think you'll just see that the U.S. trustee has filed an objection to the release of custody as well as the uh, sale of stable coins. I think really the key question in all of this is obviously who do those coins belong to, whether it's custody, earn, or for the borrowers, their collateral. I know we're talking about a reorg with yourself, with Sean Owens, with Salt Lending. There's a lot of uh, opportunity there that I think the borrowers are obviously excited about what equity would look like for earn users if borrowers are able to keep their collateral, et cetera. There, there's, that could be a crypto Cinderella story that you know I'd hope to be a part of. There's also the other option of the sale of the retail loan order book, um, potentially to Abra Global. Obviously, I know you, you've disclosed it, you're a sequid, uh, Series B uh, equity guy with Abra. I just wanna get your perspective, the best way ahead for borrowers, whether it's to be a part of a successful reorg with yourself with Salt Lending or the sale of the retail loan order book for Abra Global. Thank you. Um. 
Yeah, so again, you can't treat this as financial advice because um, what I say may lead to a different financial outcome for you. Um, but I, I believe that um, the, if we end up selling off the individual pieces, we're going to end up with crumbs and everyone else is going to benefit from the assets. Um, I think um, if we can get some funds to those that need their funds, and we can build a long-term vision together through a reorg. I think we're going to do a lot better um, with all the risks that come with that. Okay, let's bring on Hodler. Hodler 100. Yeah, thanks, Azad. Appreciate it. And hi, Simon. You know, good to hear from you again. And uh, thanks for hosting the spaces here. I did have two questions, but I'll go to my more important one, and that is um, how how important to you is a fresh injection of capital into a successful reorg or restructure for Celsius? And I guess could could you maybe speak to um, you know your plans to inject new capital as part of your your own plan to restructure Celsius? Yeah, so let me try and reframe from my plan to our plan. Um, I think that um, at Bank to the Future, we've never raised venture capital funding. Um, we've never taken on institutional investors. We funded the whole thing through Bitcoin and the community. Um, and I think that um, when you combine um, the assets that Celsius have with securities law compliance, with lending compliance, um, I think there's going to be a lot of people that would be really comfortable deploying some of their capital. Um, in, and I think you could even do a, uh, um, you know, a spe Shark this morning came up with some interesting ideas around um, just the community funding it. I think you could do a credit to take over, um, you know, through using this process. Um, and so I think we've got all the tools we need. I think we've got everything we need within the community. I, for one, would certainly deploy some of my capital um, that I've got locked up in the platform to um, something that excites me that I think would drive higher returns for me um, I think there's other people like that um, but we got we've got to win back trust we've got to get past chapter 11 um, and uh, maybe we can come up with some interesting way of people putting together indications of interests of you know I, I don't want to be insensitive right now because some people are really suffering and hurting and uh, we definitely don't want to be asking them to put more of their capital in if they just want out um, but it would be really interesting to see whether something like that could happen. Um, and alternatively, you know, um, capital raising is what I've done for my whole life. Um, that's what I did for IPOs and investment banking. And that's what Bank to the Future, I became a shareholder in all the companies simply because I could pull it together with other people investing. Um, and so that gave me access to the deal flow. That, uh, and uh, yeah, that's what we do. Um, community funding. And uh, I think, I think this is you couldn't ask for a better setup if we could uh, rebuild trust. Uh, but if we need to go out and get some big fish in, then we'll go out and get some big fish in. Let's uh, bring on Ben, the co-founder of Salt Lending. Hey everybody. Hey Simon. Hey Ben. Um, really uh, intense week. I uh, really want to applaud you uh, for how accessible you are to the community and, and what a what a job you're doing um, educating and uh, standing up for this uh, community in the space. Um, there's, you know, as I stated last week, um, I intend to be uh, accessible to the community as well as this process unfolds. Uh, Sean and I are chatting uh, every day, and uh, there's there's a lot going on. But the, the question I wanted to raise, uh, both to you, Simon, and to the community generally, is uh, really, what would Satoshi do in this situation? Would Satoshi want to look for some sort of gamified solution that makes the community whole? Or would he look for a vulture capitalist solution? So not to go uh, too directly at it, but I, I think we're looking at a an FTX versus BNK scenario here. And uh, I'm, I'm curious what the community thinks uh, Satoshi's viewpoint would be uh, on, on the various proposals that are 
beginning to materialize. Um, unfortunately, I'm not yet in a position to answer many questions. Uh, that will be changing, I think, over the next week or so. Um, but really just great job, Simon, and uh, keep it up. Yeah, thanks, Ben. And thanks for everything you've done and the whole journey you've been through and the ups and downs and, uh, you know, the the wins and the losers. And um, that's what being involved in this industry is. And um, I think it's interesting to return to what would Satoshi do? Um, he, he originally talked in the Bitcoin talk forum about the concept of, um, you know, tokenized assets and uh, various things on, on top of Bitcoin and um, you know, he did all that. Here's what I would say. Um, community funding is definitely a step in the right direction, but the only thing that I believe that will get out of Chapter 11 is a CFI solution um, and a demonstration of how these um, services can be operated in a regulatory compliant um, way. Um, if in the future, uh, when all of the, the the regulations and the DeFi space progresses. We've we've taken advantage you know advantage of that in two ways, which is that we fund um, and create securities where you can invest in such opportunities. You know we did the Ethereum ICO, um, and uh, we allowed people to invest in compliant with securities laws, um, and we did um, Ethereum mining and various other things. Um, and eventually, I do genuinely believe that we will disrupt ourselves um, with something more decentralized. Um, I don't think the time to disrupt ourselves with something more decentralized is um, is going to get us out of Chapter Eleven. Um, and that, that's what I think. I think I think we've got a community that would um, be really interesting in figuring out how we hedge our bets because someone will disrupt the the centralized version with the decentralized version so we might as well eventually disrupt ourselves thanks for that thought process thanks Ben. okay let's bring on bitcoin class of 2011 can you hear us and if not uh, let's bring on joe lair thanks azad um, okay. so I was uh, sorry this... sorry bitcoin class of 2011 is with us can you hear us? Oh, okay. Go ahead, Joe. Sorry. Okay. Thank you. Um, so uh, briefly, I was on the uh, spaces last night. And like Simon said, I think there has been a real turning point with, with the community. Um, it's no longer, actually, Simon, if, if I could summarize briefly and, t and correct me if I'm wrong on any of the facts or sentiments from the conversation last night. Um, basically, what I, what I took from it is that this is no longer about Simon's plan versus Alex's plan. This is about how to make the community whole. And uh, to Richard's point, I think that decentral the decentralized part of this is the process that we're all going through together in figuring out how to uh, maximize the, the state to make us all whole. Um, and, and it's really a unique thing that's probably never done, been done before. Um, so, you know, Simon's idea that this is now a community led uh, plan to to make something great happen here instead of going through a liquidation process is what really turned a corner for, for everybody. And the thing that really clinched it for me um, talking to you last night was, you know, you're looking to maximize again, the value of all the, all the assets in the state to, to make us all whole. And also you see a path forward to, to utilize all those assets, um, grow, grow the, the, the platform in many different ways and also still leave the ability for people to maintain their, their claim in some form, an IOU token or whatever it is on the assets that they had. In other words, not give up um, you know, the, the amount of the whole um, in order to get equity, but to get equity, maximize those assets and still uh, over time be able to uh, claim as Celsius you know, becomes profitable to be able to uh, recoup um, through Celsius and get 100% of the tokens back uh, did I miss it? Did I get anything uh, wrong in there? Yeah, I mean, you know, it, it's kind of um, there's there's different ways of carving the same things, but there's only so many tools you have. You have an IOU token, which um, if it is a token, it's going to be a security token, but you can do it without the token as well. Um, you can have an IOU security. Um, but, you know, we're in crypto, so um, we think that... Um, you know, we got integrations and relationships with um, platforms that can do that. Um, 
And uh, then you've got equity and we've got a platform where you convert your claims into equity um, and put together a model for how that's optimized. Um, and then you have, um, you know, you, you have all the assets and uh, the, the, his, his, the aha moment that I hope um, everybody has. Um, we, we're in this process and either the debtor Celsius is going to put together a reorg um, or the UCC is going to put together a real, or we're just going to sell all this shit off and give it to other shareholders like FTX. Um, that's the, the first thing. That's the game. Um, which one do we want? Well, let's just decide. Um, if if Celsius do it, it's faster. Um, if uh, the UCC do it, then it may be more optimized. Um, who cares? We'll play those processes to try and get what we need. Um, but if yeah, uh, avoid giving all of this over to someone else. Um, now there are there are three parts of the of the equation that I believe need to be plugged together in order to get out of Chapter Eleven. Um, the first is you need um, a, a viable company that has the ability to be funded, which means that there needs to be a compelling vision that you can pitch to investors. Um, at the moment, you can't find investors for Celsius. I don't believe um, somebody can mute themselves. <clears throat> Um, I've got an echo. Is that you, Azad? Or... Okay. Um, you need securities laws compliance. Well, that's what we've been working on for a long time. Um, and then you need um, lending law compliance. That's what Salt's been working on a, for a long time. And then you need a shit ton of assets to deploy um, for the benefit of creditors. Well, Celsius spent all of our money on a bunch of assets. And so let's make sure that those all go to creditors. Um, there may be, you know, it, it's mining, it's staking, um, it's uh, a bunch of private equity investments that they made, you know, all in the public information. Um, and uh, let's put all, let's put all that together. We've got the components. Uh, we just need to plug it together in the correct way. Okay, let's bring on uh, Hoddle. Hoddle, Amy. Okay, let's bring on Justin. Hey, Simon. Uh, yeah, first, uh, Ben from Salt Lending, he was asking what the community thought. Uh, and I just wanted to say, is somebody with their life savings and the proceeds of their home on the Celsius platform, the idea of FTX profiting off my life savings makes me want to puke. So I would much rather be involved in the first lend lending and uh, securities crypto business that has a potential for um, changing the financial industry. It, it sounds amazing to me. I, I don't really see it as, uh, I, I see it as either we sell everything or we go that direction. And to me, it's kind of a no brainer. And I don't really understand why uh, other people are against that. And, um, you know, so so really, but the question that I wanted to ask you was, uh, so like the, the regulators of my country, a lot of them are mostly concerned with the um, unaccredited investors. And Mashinsky said in his leak plan that uh, that's really where the money is. So the question is um, how you get the unaccredited investors involved in your plan and also, uh, like what risk would they take um, being involved in that plan? For example, um, like how would the equity risk be um, versus the crypto that we might get back, if that makes sense? Okay, so um, again, I, I don't want to give legal advice um, and um, it, it's a very compliance-based question. There's certain exemptions in the Chapter 11 process that would allow you pending an IPO to issue um, shares to uh, unaccredited investors and um, we need to make sure we take advantage of those opportunities. Um, when you receive equity, if you hold it for a year, um, eventually if you have the correct licenses, it can be sold to a non-accredited US investor. Um, the issuance of a security token um, can use some of the objections that we um, lobbied for for over five years called the JOBS Act. Um, in the future, that's not going to be an immediate solution. Um, and um, 
but I, there will be certain services that are going to require a lot more effort, a lot more energy and a lot more work in order to make available to um, non-accredited US investors. It's the, it's the hardest demographic to compliantly um, satisfy. Um, but if you can compliantly satisfy, what has Celsius shown? Uh, how, many of, how many of you are non-accredited US investors? It seems like a lot of you. <laughs> Um, so firstly, we have to try and create an instrument that using the exemptions and regulations um, allow this to get you what, what you need to compensate yourself. Um, and then what services are going to be available for you? That requires a collaborative relationship um, that begins with getting this process signed off with US regulators um, and a non-contentious relationship where you're continually disclosing to them um, and going through, you know, the processes they have for when you expand your services uh, rather than waiting for them to knock on your door. And, and that's kind of um, the process. We definitely can't offer you everything straight away. Um, but I can see a path to um, giving everyone the recovery they needed using um, the Chapter 11 processes in, com in combination with um, brokers. Okay, next speaker is Richard Rangel. Can you hear us? Yes, I can. Thank you, Azad. Um, first, of all, uh, first of all, I just want to say thank you, Simon, for creating this community or, uh, you know, forming the community together. I think the community already existed, um, but you were an instrument in bringing us all together. Um, I had the pleasure of speaking in last night's talk space and um, I talked with a lot of different people all across the community, uh, sell token holders, uh, loan holders, et cetera. Um, and it's just been incredibly productive and everyone has been incredibly formal with each other. And it's just excited to, you know, I'm excited to see that come uh, together after so much animosity towards the different communities. So thank you everyone for uh, coming together and, and making that happen. Um, I just want to ask a question and maybe you don't have the answer to this, um, but I'm actually going to be going into the military um, early next year. I'm not exactly sure on the date just yet. Um, but my question is, is assuming the Cinderella story happens and we see some sort of reorg happen, um, I will not have access to internet or my phone for essentially two months for basic training. Um, and I was wondering, is there, any way that this would affect my potential recovery if I was not present for, uh, for example, like some legal documentation signing, um, if that's even necessary, or would I just come, you know, come out of training, assuming the best case scenario, and I would already be taken care of? Oh, very, very difficult and very specific question. But um, let me try and add some value. Um, if you yeah, you know, I, I obviously can't, I don't know what's coming and I don't know what I don't know. And someone might say you've got to do something by a deadline. Um, but my guess is that um, if you had a claim, all right, so we've, we've got um, situations where, for example, um, somebody's situation has changed on Bank to the Future um, and they were an accredited investor and, no, and they're no longer an accredited investor. Um, then what we do is we just hold their account um, and when they're ready to upload any unnecessary documents, then they can gain access to their account again. I, I imagine um, that all of the records, so you've got to obviously get through the claim form. Um, I think that should happen this year. Um, but I imagine that all the records are there that are needed. Um, and, uh, you know, everyone would probably need to re-KYC um, onto new platforms um, if any of these instruments were issued. Um, but if you didn't do it within a certain time frame, I know that our individual policy is that we just hold those assets until people are ready to claim them. Um, but, you know, I don't know anything that's going to happen in the legal process that I don't know. So I, ho I hope that's kind of useful, but I can't answer really. Okay, next question. Um, so next speaker is I am Vengeance. Can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you guys uh, loud and clear. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, your one question, please. Uh, yes, I had one question, but uh, uh, I will ask uh, another question because when Norman asked a question about uh, to Simon's, uh, Simon said um, there is a percentage that can be expected. 
So uh, that worries me a lot. Um, so oh, sorry, um, let me make sure I got that clear. I think he said the percentage of how far we are through the process. He didn't say the percentage of the haircut. Um, oh, okay. That's what I heard. Yeah, he I'm said, sorry. are we 20% through the process and Voyager is like 80% through the process? Okay, I got heart attack after... Yeah, sorry, um, thanks for bringing that up. If no, anyone no. thought I was talking about haircuts, um, no, no, we're no, not no, there. Sir. You're good, Simon. I, I really appreciate your work that you're doing for a community. I really appreciate it. I have a question, Simon, um, that is related to loan. Um, I mean, I to uh, to full disclosure, I, I have uh, assets in a loan and I have assets in a custody. Uh, but uh, I'm I'm little. Uh, I just want to ask you about the loan collateral, right? So if in case in future um, this Celsius going for uh, you know reorg, um, so if they what do you think if they do a haircut on a loan collateral that would impact uh, the, uh, uh, the 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 reorg right so nobody will trust the company and put their money to borrow against the uh, borrow so that is a big business um so when what do you think about a loan uh, situation when it comes to the reorg um, yeah, I don't necessarily have um, the specific, this is how it should be done. Um, this is a collaborative process uh, with people putting their heads together. But one thing I can say is that uh, during Bitfinex, um, when they had to pause, they had, um, you know, they had the ability for people to short and margin trade and people to receive interest. And I believe that um, that was one of the sources of yield was um, Bitfinex's um, margin loan order book. They, that was the first one. Um, and uh, when it had to close, they weren't fully collateralized, but it was replaced with an asset, um, which was the, to the IAU token. Um, and that became the collateral. Um, I don't see why um, that uh, can't work. Um, it depends on how pristine that collateral is. Um, and uh, it's also dependent upon really the outcome of where the courts take this. Uh, so yeah, uh, the courts have to say where um, who owns what and, and how it's going to be treated. Um, and a reorg needs to really think about um, that's a very valuable customer. How do we solve this situation? And that just has to be solved in a way where you want to stay. Okay, next speaker is uh, Phil. Can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yep, loud and clear. Your one question. Thanks, Azad. Uh, thanks, Simon. And firstly, never forget, Simon, how much the community appreciates what you've done since June. You know, you've really been a big source of strength. Um, my question is, it's about the, the exclusivity. So the exclu exclusivity, see if I can say it, ends early November, I think. So how is that going to affect um, your plan i mean what i'm trying to say is when do you get the chance to present your plan and please god there's no extension to the exclusivity and how is that presentation of the plan when it's going to happen going to be affected by the the bidding process that's going on at the moment with all the, the assets <clears throat> yeah so um the the energetical shift is i believe it's not Celsius's plan versus um, my plan. Um, I think it's a community reorg either done through Celsius collaborating in the process um, or the UCC um, leading the process. And so there's one of those two are going to lead the process to a community reorg. And it's going to be a community reorg versus, um, you know, uh, bids. Um, versus chapter seven. And here's the thing, we get to vote. Uh, so if anyone wants to buy this stuff, um, uh, then we get to vote. Um, if anyone wants to propose a reorg from the data um, or the UCC, uh, we get to vote. Uh, the only thing we don't get to vote on is if um, regulators take it upon themselves to say that this is such a pile of shit and fraud that they send it into chapter seven and we get the worst outcome for all of us. And so I, I think we we need to demonstrate to regulators an appetite to um, work collaboratively with them and 
that they're failing in their job if they give us a shit outcome here. Um, and that's what that's what we need to do. And we need to work with both Celsius and a non in, you know, hold them hold them to account. Um, but the data has exclusivity, and I'm hoping that there's a board in place that are just focused on a on a reorg. Um, and so if they if they come up with the the process that um, combines all this together, uh, then you know we we have there is a process to be followed. Um, and it's a lot less contentious than it was uh, uh, last week. Um, and uh, the same with the UCC. And the UCC have committed to town halls. Uh, and we can ask them, hey, we're really not happy with the way this is going. What are you, what are you guys going to do? Uh, we want a community reorg. What are you going to do to give us a community reorg? What do we need to do? Uh, we've got all the pieces. Um, and, and I think we're in that iterative process now. We've got the UCC to commit to doing their... Um, they're town halls and we're paying for them. So get your, we need to get our money to us. Okay, let's bring on Robert. Robert, can you hear us? Okay, let's bring on Orpheus. Can you hear us? Yes, I can. Can you hear me? Yep, your question, please. Okay, so um, if we do a reorg, then we're probably going to get less coins back and more equity. If we do a chapter seven, we're probably going to get more coins back and zero equity. I wanted to know what is your reasonable assumption in terms of chapter seven um, and uh, the community and what type of a haircut that would involve versus this um, reorg um, and I hate to call it a Cinderella story because those things never exist in real life. Um, but this um, optimistic idea uh, that you want to present or that you feel uh, would, would provide uh, the community with the best chance of getting whole again. I heard somebody say 100% of our coins back in kind. I'm not sure if I uh, um, agree with that or I see that as a, pos uh, as a possibility, but if I missed something, can you explain that a little bit more? So really quick, let me just reiterate, what is the chapter seven gonna, uh, like does chapter seven give us a 50% haircut because we actually sell some assets which can then be used to fill the hole. If we do a reorg right off the bat, are we only at 30% with a 70% equity in whatever future company there is? And then can you also um, remark on the gentleman who uh, believed that uh, based on your plan, we would be in a position to receive 100% of our um, investment. Um, and I, I believe he said back in kind as well in, uh, in terms of coins. Uh, so please. Yes. So um, check out the Bitfinex hack recovery video um, if you want to see the structure that did produce a Cinderella story um, that never have shit. Um, and, it, and it did. Um, but I'm not saying that can happen again because uh, it, it was exceptional, it was stunning, um, and it was a big celebration on the other side. Um, but a lot of things lined up to, to, to make that happen. Uh, and this one's harder, definitely a bigger challenge. Um, so it's not that you need to take some of your coins and invest in equity. It's uh, everyone has their payment in kind. Um, and, uh, you know, however that's structured, um, I agree with some of the processes that you want to simplify that down to Bitcoin, Ethereum, um, and USDC. Um, I, I think that's a, a, a good way of doing it. Um, and uh, then you have your, your, your assets, and then you have a hole. Um, and that hole needs to be filled with something. It could be filled with... Um, the appreciation of an IAU token, security token, or it could be filled with equity to the value. And those assets may not be worth the whole, or they may be worth a lot more than the whole in the future. Um, in the case of Bitfinex, there was a 30% haircut, so everyone got 70% back immediately. Um, they uh, had the 30% was filled with an IAU token. Um, and that that uh, token was uh, convertible into equity or had the ability to sell it. Um, or you could just hold it and receive your money back. And if Bit, if the customers didn't stay with Bitfinex, then they would never have been able to repay. 
And if a percentage of them didn't convert to equity because they believed in the future of Bitfinex, um, then they would never have been able to repay. So all of those came together. Uh, and so that really comes with, uh, so it's not about, you know, if then we wanted to do something like a community creditor takeover, then that would be a solicitation to ask people if they want to invest further. Um, and people would just make that choice if they wanted to. Um, it wouldn't be something that you'd be forced into. So it's just it's just about filling the hole. Now, under a bid, if someone comes along and pays two to three billion dollars for all of the Celsius assets and it fills the hole, um, then great. I just don't think there's an investor out there. I know that because I tried them all um, and many of them were willing to commit, but they needed a company and an equity um, that they that they understood and believed had a future. Uh, and so if we can create equity that um, people are willing to invest into um, that has a future, then investors are easy to find. Okay, let's uh, try and bring Robert back on. Uh, can you hear us, Robert? Uh, yes, thank you so much, Azad, for getting me back That's, on. And um, okay. I was driving in and out. Uh, Simon, right. I, funny enough, um, just I'm a teacher of something called CrossFit. Uh, that's my actual job. I travel the world doing seminars for the company. And as someone who explains something very difficult um, in simple ways, you do an excellent job of doing that. And I just wanted to compliment you. My question is, why can't we have a uh, tokenized asset that's paying dividends uh, based on bot trading? And if that's super simple, it's regulation. You can just say regulation. <laughs> and answer the 0.5 question. Regulation. Are there any okay. Are there any other advantages then if I have, let's say, 80% of my account in USDC minus the volatility? I know you've stated before if uh, if the, the plan was just crypto long, which we obviously know that, that there are issues with that, that would be the only benefit. But are there any other benefits if you are mainly held in USDC? Thank you. Um, it, yeah, it just depends how this is going to be restructured. If I'm given my ideological, um, perspective, I, I just prefer if everyone was treated equally. Um, I just think it's the simplest and the easiest, but then I understand there's all these ad hoc groups as, um, different situations, um, and it, and it can be pretty complex. Um, so you know, the whole, the whole thing of crypto long was the concept of if we gave you, you know, a bunch of, a bunch of, um, if you could outperform the market and you're in stable coins, um, then a crypto recovery, um, could potentially pay you, but the company's crypto short. Uh, so, you know, I, d I don't think we should be thinking the, the company's benefiting from the crash in the market right now, not the recovery in the market. Um, now, if you want to create a black box hedge fund security token, I don't think it's transparent enough. Um, I think it's easier to create a security token where you get the benefits of staking assets and mining assets if you can make them profitable um, and uh, just things that you can do transparently. The, the, sim the beauty of the mining back security we created back in the day was uh, everyone got a daily dividend um the terms were clear when the mining was going to be de-shelved um and then there was regular updates on um you know the at, at what stage they ceased to be profitable uh and it was all just done through technology and it was just beautiful okay next speaker is Imi V. hey Zad, thank you so much i appreciate it uh, Simon, thank you so much for holding uh, these AMAs. To be honest with you, I didn't know what a Twitter space was until I started listening to you. Um, I've had the, the opportunity to ask this before, but I'm kind of curious from your perspective again. Uh, I've reached out to the UCC. I was one of the many people, thousands of people that had a loan that got liquidated. And it seems like when I look at recovery plans, I look at communication, that group of people is not being addressed. Uh, based on some of the things that have happened recently, do you still think there, there's any um, action that people like myself can take uh, in regards to people that were liquidated during the time where things were being uh, halted? 
to chapter 11 where people are now protected where they're not getting liquidated yeah it's up it's up to you whether you think um you've you've got a chance of suing a bankrupt estate um personally i don't think it's the best use of energy uh because the money's not there um you've been shafted you've been treated badly there's an examiner there's an investigation um you know things are going to come out but at the same time i appreciate you might want to hire your own counsel and you might want to pursue and it might lead to a better result for you um but to to me you know it's, it's just ideologically me i'm i'm not i'm not a sewer um i've never actually sued anyone um i, I tend to try and just fight back in a in a way or construct a win-win it's just kind of me um, but then sometimes you end up in situations where litigation is the best one. I think it's an individual decision. I don't think I could give you advice on that. Okay, next speaker is Daylong. Can you hear us? Yes, I can. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks for letting me uh, have an opportunity to speak. Simon, you're a great guy. Uh, I go all the way back with you to the Bifidex disaster. So uh, I'll send you an email so you know who this is, but I'd like to uh, keep my anonymity. Um, I think we can all agree that the future of this entire industry is based on Bitcoin scaling. I don't want to talk for people, but I just think that's uh, um, evident to all of us. I would like to see you, Simon, explain to the UCC and their and White and Case, because I don't think they know this, because they're not one of us, that you know we can depend we can we can't depend on Bitcoin saving the day to use the words you used uh, a couple of weeks ago in the Bitfinex case, but we kind of have to do that anyway, or we should do that anyway, because the whole process or this whole industry depends on Bitcoin scaling. So if we give it 24 to 48 months at a maximum, hopefully a lot less than that for Bitcoin to continue to raise in value, that would, and if we did the plan where we got equity, all of the assets that Celsius has or whatever its new name is, will also grow the mining, the lending business that will all grow in value relative to the dollar and then make us whole. I think all we really need is time. That's all I had to say. I really appreciate it. And thanks for everything you do, Simon, and everybody else out there, especially um, Mr. DePolitano. I really enjoy uh, seeing your work, sir. Okay, pleasure. Yeah, so for me, um, I'm, I'm, if, you, if you're familiar with my other content, I'm a, I'm a Bitcoin thinker. And so when I think of my recovery, I know how many Bitcoins I had in Celsius and I want them back. And so I don't really care what happens to the value in Bitcoin in terms of my recovery, because I don't think in dollars and I know other people do. Um, so for me, it's about deploying additional assets that give me an opportunity to get my Bitcoin back. Um, and I don't really care about the dollar value of those Bitcoins. But obviously, you know, my, mining and various assets are dependent upon the performance of the industry. And the thing that did say Bitfinex, as you probably know, is that we went into a raging bull market um, and uh, Binance became this monster um, and all that tether was deposited because they didn't have a bank account um, and uh, the industry just recovered and we entered into the ICO boom. And, uh, you know, that's what led to the recovery, uh, as we know. So, yeah, it's um, I think the UCC does know that we're all very crypto bullish. I, I've never heard them like advocate for um hey there's a bunch of people that want dollars back i've only and they even in the town hall they even said it would probably be more complicated and more expensive to actually liquidate these assets and not do crypto in kind um but yeah um i i think i think there's only one way of filling a big hole and that's the long term um i don't think it gets filled quickly okay next speaker is bradley Bradley, can you hear us? Yeah, hello. Okay, Bradley's not there. Uh, Johan. Yes. Hello. Can you hear me? Yep, loud and clear. Yes. Hello. Thank you for letting me speak. Now, I, <clears throat> I have a sort of question about the ownership of assets on the Celsius platform. So, um, just to let you know, I hold an account. I hold Cell Token, and I'm a borrower. Now, in my view, the <clears throat> ownership status of different assets will need to be clarified before there can be any kind of recovery plan. Um, because you cannot consider, for instance, custody account 
asset as an asset that is Celsius to even sell. Uh, same would, in my mind, go for collateral of loans. And I would like to see or understand what Simon thinks about this. Sure. Yeah, I think the court's gonna um, the court's gonna determine that. Um, and um, I think we should be really engaged in that process and that battle. Um, but that's going to be determined in court. It's not going to be determined by us. Um, and uh, once that is resolved, then um, it'll be a lot easier to figure out the the real, because then you'll know whether you know who you're spreading the the whole uh, who you're spreading the whole across and who's getting the haircut. Um, if you want my opinion, um, I think that um, substance is going to prevail over terms and conditions and the UCC indicated that there are you know a certain that they've come up with a framework of what legally constitutes property um, and if it just says it in the terms and conditions it also has to meet the other requirements and I think that if you look at the examiner's report um, the, so the UCC um, narrowed down the scope of the examiner's report and this was one of the key issues um, was what happened to the tokens were they commingled um, what is the substance of how those tokens were treated i i think we're going to have to wait for the examiner's report on that and that might be the first thing they do rather than having one report they might iterate it out uh, and so i think the examiner will say the substance of how it was treated um, and then it will go into legal versus substance. And um, I think there's a pretty strong framework that the, the lawyers can argue out and then the judge can rule on. OK, let's try and bring back uh, Bradley, if you can hear us, please. Yeah, thanks for getting me back up, Azad. Um, Simon, I'm like you, I'm I'm been moved by some of the stories that you hear of people who have had a significant portion of their life savings locked away and and um i've seen some pleas to say look can you just get me some of my money can you just give me a little bit so i can pay some bills and um and the response has been well really we we can't do that until um you know we, can, we can't take funds out right away we we need to sort of treat this as a, in a holistic way and so those people are basically right now facing a, the only choice they have is to is to sell their um um their portion on the open market which i haven't checked recently but i think it's between 20 and 25 percent is what people are the the current market rate is for people going out and um and selling that that asset that they have. Um, what I'm wondering is, I'm I'm wondering if there's a way, um, because I've, I, I'm a I'm a six figure um, U.S. dollar um, account holder on on Celsius, and I'm lucky enough to be in a position where, you know, I I'm not struggling to pay the bills or or anything. I've I've sort of mentally, with great reservation, written off um, mentally that that whole chunk of money but i'm wondering if there's a way that um we as a community people who have assets locked on the locked on the platform would be able to band together and um and offer these people exactly what they're looking for you know before a a solution comes through the bankruptcy court but to offer these people some relief um and and maybe give them a little bit better deal than they could get on the open market um and i'm not obviously not talking about charity i'm i think i'm a nice guy but i'm not a saint but some sort of situation where you would be able to offer those people what they need in exchange for taking on some more risk in terms of um yeah you, know, um, you, you get the idea yep so i mean if anyone wants to come up with a free market solution to that then um the community is welcome um you understand the challenge there's there's certain things which are challenging about that which is fraud scammers um you you have to overcome those challenges 
Um, but I don't think the court is going to be able to find a way of paying people out until everyone knows who owns what. Um, so I, I can't think of a solution for that. Um, but yeah, if someone else wants to take the mission, then the only free market solution I know is selling your claims. Um, maybe one thing that was interesting was um, essentially with the IOU token, um, the most skeptical people sold it at 30 cents. Um, and the it actually became a prediction market for the likelihood of recovery. And so you, you may start to see those prices go up as, as time persists. Um, and as things get um, more more bullish, but yeah, I don't I don't know how to solve the issue of I need money now without getting um, someone that's only willing to pay a very low price in order to take the risk, and that's the market. Um, but yeah, if you if anyone's got solutions to that, I I don't have one unfortunately. Okay, we've got twenty five minutes left. Um, let's uh, bring on Keystones. Hey, um, thanks for the letting me on. Um, just wanted to say thank you so much, Simon, for you know just the great first impressions. Um, it feels kind of like I might be going a bit off topic, but um, when you posted that information about the regular regulations and how you had been talking to various people back in 2013 and 14, um, I was just kind of interested in how you sort of saw this space going, because it, it kind of feels like a lot of this regulation, this whole looking after the recovery process is usually um, based on sort of um, um, the USD or, uh, yeah, your normal currencies around the world. But um, how does that sort of work in terms of in the future where assuming Bitcoin or uh, becomes a much more larger, like, do, would you just have these different regulations in terms of that are focused more on like denomination within Bitcoin, if that makes sense? So I'm not sure whether I'm getting. Yeah, I think um, I think if we get a real go out of this, then we're going to set the the process for the rest of the industry. Um, it kind of happened with Bitfinex, but it was so low key compared to where we are today. Um, and uh, when people started to look back at how to how to solve some of these companies. Um, I wanted to introduce that and then it, um, mining pools like Paul N started to adopt it. Um, and then uh, we started to see the Celsius recovery adopt some of those elements as well. Um, it, it missed off some of the important pieces um, in the leak anyway. Um, but yeah, I think it's kind of like um, once you figure out how to do an IPO on a stock market, um, you go through a bunch of insider trading and shit, and then they introduce new regulations to prevent that shit. Um, and then eventually you end up with a standardized process that all stock markets around the world copy. Um, I, I think there's a really interesting opportunity and maybe a new division and product to um, create a, a, a bankruptcy process using this technology. I think, I think that would be one of the exciting things that come out, but let's just take one step at a time. Let's, uh, let's try and make this one work. And, um, We've got enough of a challenge getting out of this um, chapter 11 and we've got a mission to get out of it. So we, we've got to get that balance right between um, being innovative and, and doing something that, that, that works and gets signed off. OK, let's bring on uh, Paint Taha. Your question, please. Hello, can you hear me? Oh, yep. We can um, yeah, uh, as someone that had a portion of my living expenses on Celsius. I'd like to speak to people in that situation. And uh, I know there's there's people that are feeling I just need to get my money out now and they might be more inclined towards chapter seven. But uh, I also want to say that Simon is saying that if we go with a reorganization that there will be an open market where people can pull out cash immediately and maybe they only need half of their funds now and they can keep half of their funds later uh, that can appreciate in the company. And as someone that worked in uh, as a software programmer for 20 years, <clears throat> excuse me, I worked for a startup that uh, went bankrupt and uh, uh, the computer, I mean, all of our software was sold at five cents on the dollar. And uh, the thing that we're not going to get with a chapter seven is there is value in the Celsius software. 
And I believed in the platform if it was run correctly, you know, with the 80-20 model where 80% is being distributed to people and 20% is being kept to run the business. And I think in two years with a reorg, there are gonna be people that want this service and they're not gonna know the history. They're not gonna be, uh, um, uh, you know, they're not gonna have a stigma about, about the company and we have good software and that has value. And I think I wanna see the reorg go through, but I also wanna see people taken care of. One thing I've done, if you're closer to retirement, there is a option to pull money out of your uh, retirement in the US, it's called a uh, SEPP. It's a, um, excuse me, let me get the, the name correct. A substantial equal periodic payments. You can start pulling money out of your retirement to fill your hole uh, and there's no penalty. So that's an option for people to have money in a retirement plan that needs some money now. I just wanna mention that because that's uh, something a lot of people don't know about. Um, but my question to Simon is, could he clarify how the selling of uh, of this um, security token would work on the open market if if the reorg happens for people that need money uh, need, need some of their money back now because I think that would help people to vote for the reorg because I think it gives us the best of both worlds. Thank you. Yeah. So um, you know you have funds which are available um, straight away. Um, that needs to be figured out. Um, so those would be on the platform available to people to withdraw with maybe incentives to stay and those that need to go, you go. Um, you could have a claim on future revenues through a security token, which could be tradable on a security token market. And um, it's the market that determines the price. Um, you have illiquid equity with a bank to the future secondary market where people are looking to contribute equity into their retirement plans every month, which produces a flow of investors that may want to purchase what you're, what you want to sell. Um, and uh, yeah, so the, those, there is security token exchanges, there is um, a private equity uh, market and on Bank to the Future. Um, and uh, the, those are, and then you've got just withdrawing funds that are available. Okay, let's bring on uh, Anthony. Hey, Simon, how you doing? Great, thank you. Yeah, so, no, I was reading over the Voyager thing. I know I heard you earlier say you didn't read up on it yet, but I just wanted to fill you in on something that I thought was very interesting. So, of course, uh, we know FTX basically purchased um, the assets and basically all the customers for $100 million, right? That's pretty much what it came down to here. Mm -hmm. um, we don't, say it again. Yeah, sorry, disagreeing with you. Carry on. Yeah, yeah. So no, so basically that's kind of what went down. Um, we don't know if they want to do something to make right people, maybe like people that had Voyager token, give them FTT token for free or something else, like to sweeten the pie eventually, right? To really make these customers want to stick, because I don't think you're going to have customers really stick. To be honest with you, if you shaft them, right? It doesn't make sense long term for your business. But I, I guess you could look at it like, well, we spent, you know probably near a billion dollars on traditional advertisements as a company FTX, right? For major league baseball and, you know, uh, the FTX arena, the heats arena in Miami and all this stuff, they spent crazy amounts of money and they weren't able to acquire any customers. So maybe they just think, Hey, we're throwing a hundred million dollars out there. And if some stay, some stay, if they don't, they don't, that could be the game they're playing. Right. Um, I, I don't think it's smart business because I don't think long-term it makes sense, but that's what they did. And then basically seeing their UCC, um, accepted that offer, right? And there was another offer by a, a basically a com competing bid from a company called Wave Finance. And Wave Finance, you know, they wanted to basically keep it as a company, keep Voyager going and, you know, create a bunch of utility around the Voyager token and kind of do what, somewhat like what Bitfinex kind of did. They wanted to give them, you know, uh, upside in the company's growth over time where they could potentially fill the hole with certain components. And it's kind of like, you know, kind of your plan, the plan we all kind of agree upon, the whole concept, of course, Voyager didn't have any real assets 
Um, they didn't have a lending business. They didn't have a Bitcoin mining company. They didn't have all these other things, a custodial business, all the stuff that, you know, Celsius has. It was really just a platform where people can stake their coins and use an earn program. That's really all it was. Um, but just to see that they accepted that bid and, you know, just destroying the Voyager token alone, um, that's destroying $200 million worth of value. So people that own that token and that platform, like <laughs> they're way worse off with the situation um, because they're literally destroyed the whole company, right? You're just going to take the customers over, move them into your platform. So anyone that had the Voyager token uh, got really shafted there. My thought process is if we bring the salt and Celsius together, right, and we create a new co, what we could do is basically airdrop a new utility token to all salt and Celsius holders. And I think that would be a very strategic move um, personally, because I think you'd bring communities together from both fronts to make the, the strongest company in the crypto lending business. And, you know, there's a lot of other components besides crypto lending, really one of the strongest crypto companies in the world, because there's so many components here. You could have a staking business, credit card business. We're talking a mining business, a custodial business, pretty much it's a one-stop shop for crypto. But I think the strategic move, because I'm reading, you know, the financials here, basically they destroyed $200 million worth of value by just deleting everything Voyager, right? If the token's gone, that's $200 million that's going to go towards that hole um, in the sense of people's losses, uh, which is, you know, pretty crappy in my personal opinion for those people. You know, I, I don't know anything really about that token specifically, but it just doesn't seem like the best solution for them. So just wanted to share that with you. Yeah, sure. Thanks a lot. So my, my head pulls out a couple of things from it and, I, I think I think it gives us insight into what will get regulatory pushback and what won't get regulatory pushback. And I think it gives us insight into um, the that when you have a smaller hole, um, I think the UCC will pick the easy option, which is low risk cash. Um, so those are the two things I kind of interpret out of it. Um, and so the the third thing is that um uh, I, I i don't know if you were here in the beginning but i think the regulators want to use this as a precedent for how they want the business to be run in the future um and i think if we add anything that is in line with a model that treats a token not as a security i, th I think we're going to we're going to get pushed back and and potentially the same fate as waves which is where they just pick the, the cash bidder over the more risky approach. Okay, let's uh, bring in the next speaker, Neo. Thank you. Okay, one question for, for Simon. In, your, in the reorg, I know you're going to present a proposal after the 120-day exclusivity, if that doesn't end sooner. In in that plan, uh, you got, you're going to propose, if I understand correctly, that the size of the whole will be converted into equity uh, for the new co uh, new company. Now, I know you haven't addressed this, but I'm expecting that you address it at some point. Uh, what would be the the uh, tax implications of that? Uh, if it's going to be considered a taxable event or if the chapter 11, because I know we all learned that they have a lot of special treatments during the chapter 11, if for whatever reason, maybe that there's a tax exemption uh, because we were forced to sell and not, uh, you know, doing it voluntarily. So th that would be something that I would like you to address. Uh, the other thing. Uh, let's let's again, do one at a time. So, my guess is this will be a taxable event, um, and I'm not aware of any exemption in Chapter 11 that would make it not a taxable event. Um, your government's broke. They all want money. They all need money. Um, they they they're not going to give up any tax, especially out of a crypto bankruptcy. Okay. Yeah, because uh, I think part of the reason why uh, we'll one crypto is because of uh, obviously you know we took loans to avoid the taxable events um 
And I think if we get, uh, you know, crypto in kind, obviously that would be preferable. Um, now, if you offer me that I'm going to get 100% or 90% of the investment in dollars today, uh, that would be something obviously that would prefer because I, I will go back and purchase whatever I want to, right? So I think I just want to make that comment there. Uh, the other thing I wanted to say is thank you, Plan C and Eric, who I think are here in the audience for making those questions on the UCC, especially Plan C when you talk about clawbacks with Keith, because I think we're, th that's a high concern from a lot of people. Um, about clawbacks for retail. I think it's okay to investigate if there was any fraud from insiders, but I think retail for clawback, um, at least, you know, the people that I talked to, they were, were all again, against. And I think uh, somebody posted something on the Telegram group and clawbacks. I'm part of two groups, uh, the loans and clawbacks, that there was uh, an act in 2019 in the US where um, they're asking the trustee to do some due diligence uh, because in the past they were sending a lot of demand letters and they were causing a lot of uh, chaos in the process. And now I think one of the changes in the law were that they had to actually do some due diligence. So one thing I wanted to ask you, uh, Simon, is what, what does that due diligence look like? Maybe this is more a question for the next UCC uh, space, but I would like to know a little bit more details of what type of due diligence that they do in. And also they mentioned that they are more prone to do settlements that, um, that discovery because the legal process is expensive. So also I wanted to learn a little bit about who are they talking to the UCC to, you know, settle on these cases. Uh, yeah, I don't think I could answer that one, unfortunately. The the UCC, um, they're not telling us because they can't tell us, and they're obviously settling because they think it's going to be cheaper. Uh, I think it's one for the town hall, really. I don't think I could answer that. Okay, we've got nine minutes left. Um, so let's bring on Jimmy Z. Jimmy Z, can you hear us? Okay, let's go for four AD dot ETH. Four AD, can you hear us? All right, let's bring on a few more people. Ron Paul Bot. Hey, I'm I'm here. Okay, four AD, speak. Go ahead. Your question. Okay, look, my question is regarding loans. Uh, I've been talking yesterday with some people in the loan groups and the thing is there are many international customers that as you know uh, we are not not allowed anymore to use our crypto in earn accounts to pay for interest for loans so now they are asking, they are only accepting cash, as you know, and they want uh, only wire transfers, you know, and... Yeah, can, you, can, can I answer that? Um, UCC covered this yesterday. They said um, just, uh, like, this was covered, is crypto loans here? Do you want to, he'll probably give a better answer to us. He probably knows more about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If he, if he can, I think I talked to him yesterday and the general consensus seems, seems to be do not send them any cash. Yeah. Uh, so, because uh, for some Does people, in like some lens, for yeah, some I'm people in some funny. countries, for some people in some countries, for example, for me, to pay a ridiculous interest uh, of one percent, that is less than a dollar a month, it would cost me like a hundred twenty dollars just just to send that. Uh, that, that, yeah, that's that, yeah, that, hey, uh, yeah, you know? that, hey, Azad, thanks for bringing me up. Thanks, Simon. Yeah, I know the UCC did address it. They said from the 341 hearing with Chief Financial Officer Ferraro, who's now the Chief Restructuring Officer, that, yeah, loans are not being liquidated. They're not sending margin calls. The, the, the problem is, and this is what I've addressed, is that the Celsius loan team 
is still sending out emails to borrowers saying that their principal payment is due. So my concern now is if an unsuspecting borrower is to wire in money to a bankrupt platform based on those, what I, I call them phishing emails, fraud emails in a last ditch effort to get borrowers to send money to a bankrupt platform when they don't know what's going to happen to their collateral, that to me <clears throat> constitutes wire fraud. And should an unsuspecting borrower wire in money to Celsius, C-suite executives need to be charged with wire fraud. Their salaries need to be zeroed out. And then from their personal financial wallets, they need to be charged with wire fraud. And a financial penalty needs to be sent back into the debtor's estate to make retail investors whole across custody, earn, and borrowers. It is criminal what is going on right now with the Celsius executives and the company. And I'm, I'm, it's glad to see that retail users, whether they're borrowers, custody, and earn, starting to come together, not only hold Celsius accountable, we've been successful in getting Alex Mashinsky out from his position. I still have concerns about him being a director in charge of $1.88 billion, as well as one of his friends on the special committee uh, tasked with investigating him and what he's doing. But I, I still have concerns. It's been addressed to the UCC. But Celsius, just to be clear, continues to this day, this morning, is sending out emails to borrowers, telling them to wire in money that their principal payment is due. Yeah, hey, that's shit. Thank you for bringing that up. Just, just, just to clarify, I, I, I am not willing to pay any any principal. I was just talking about interest because I don't, I don't want to be 24-7. Yep, well, 100%. And, and the other thing that is all, they send out this email, they say, hey, in the bottom of the email, they said, this could change at any time. We hope to be able yes. to inform you. Exactly. We may not be able to inform you. So one of the, exactly. the reasons a borrower constituency is so organized is because we know that Celsius does not have our best interests at heart. We know Alex Mashinsky never had retail. And, and they are spurging the cash. Yeah, they never had anyone's best interests at heart. Kirkland and Ellis does not, especially does not have retail users' best interests at heart. So it's just frustrating. It's taken two month, two plus months since July 12th, the bankruptcy, to get rid of Alex Mashinsky when he should have been gone on day one. And we would be having this conversation now on July 14th. But it's unfortunate that we're not. But yeah, just to, to be clear, Celsius continues to scam borrowers by sending them emails, telling them to send in the principal. You are making accusations, let me just say, I think you are making accusations here. It could be just Ron a Paul, problem I, on I, the I am making accusations. On the digital I'm, making, side, I'm but making accusations that are backed up yeah. by facts. Celsius. No, what you posted is true. Celsius, what you posted is true. Celsius conti but, continues to scam borrowers. They are scamming borrowers by sending emails saying that their principal payment is due. That is an accusation, yes, that is backed up by fact. We are not here to yeah, defend I'm just, Alex I'm just Mashinsky speaking. anymore. The diehard Celsian yeah, really cult and the sell short squeezers are done. We are not tolerating them. Anymore. We are not about it's not about the sell short squeezers. Yeah, I'm we just are saying not that here knowing to entertain Square. or defend anyone that is here to defend Celsius. There is it not a there's not a Celsius community. There is a group of people like Norman had said that want to get their crypto back. That is it. I agree. I'm just speaking from a software uh, perspective. It could be just the Dmail list uh, setting those, those things automatically. Yeah, Ron Paul, then that but is total and complete Ron Paul's on payroll. That is total and yeah. complete incompetence from the uh, I agree. I agree. There, there is a problem there. And so there is if a problem they make there. the mistake, if they make the mistake because of their algorithm, that an unsuspecting borrower wires in money to Celsius, do you agree that the C-suite executives should be charged with wire fraud? Yes or no? I agree that it has to be reverted immediately. No, it, it shouldn't no be sense. reverted. Because... It should, yes, it should be reverted. But then C-suite executives need to be charged with wire fraud. They need to have financial Wh penalties. Whoever is allowing that, they, yes. They, they, they need they to have financial penalties. They need to have financial penalties that go back to the debtor's estate to make retail loan users, retail loans, 
custody and earn more whole. This is not we're the, uh, the only thing that is weird. We the only thing that we weird is that with the bullshit. Yeah, let me just finish, and uh, I have a question for Simon. But I'm just saying that since the beginning, I think Celsius has been saying that everything is closed, no liquidations. It's happening the same from the UCC. So it's like it's really weird that still uh, you are still receiving those emails. That should be not happening. So maybe. All right, guys. Um, Simon is going to do a hard stop at 7:30. So we've got this uh, weekly AMA um on twitter space every week friday well that's what you're trying to aim for simon um do you want to have your last closing statement um yeah okay uh so i just want to say that um energetically um i think we need to figure out a new terminology for describing what we're doing but we're working on a reorg um, that reorg is either going to be done through um, Celsius, as the UCC said, or it's going to be done through um, the UCC. Um, and uh, the competition to that is really the bidding process and Chapter 7. So everyone kind of needs to think of, um, you know, where, where they stand. Do they want a Chapter 7? Do they want someone to come along and buy all the assets in the auction? Um, or do we work together on a reorg? And um, there, are, I share some of Crypto Loan's concerns about the the, the makeup of the the board. Um, and um, I think that uh, that we we need to leave the examiners to do what they do. Um, we need to expose things like just like that. That is that should definitely be known um, to the community and the community. Anyone that's affected by that should know what that is. Um, and the UCC have agreed to do these um, town halls. So yeah, each week I will um, uh, continue to to do this. I don't know whether it all fucked up when I tried to go live on YouTube and Twitter space, but we'll review whether that um, format works. And uh, obviously it's just very, we're, we're very Celsius dominated, but I hope as we go through to recovery, um, we're going to start um, shifting the conversations um, as we progress. But obviously this is front of mind, most important thing. Um, and um, as I always close off, always remember you are alive at one of the most interesting and exciting times in financial history. Uh, we get to do something that I think will go down in the history books. Um, and, uh, you know, some people are going to get really hurt. Others are going to do really well. And uh, I think that we need to make sure um, that we're the ones that benefit from all of these assets. And we do really well out of this. Um, and uh, at, at the very least, we really, really push hard um, trying. My big concern is that um, there's a much, much larger community that aren't involved in any of these conversations that um, we need to figure out how they should understand that these conversations are happening because um, we're a tiny community compared to the actual number of creditors there are out there. Um, so onwards and upwards, I hope that...